a small heater from China via eBay that you plug into an ordinary Edison uh, screw lamp holder, E27, and it's got three positions in the vault. It's got three LEDs in the front for light. It's got a fan at the back that looks like a computer fan. It's got a heat element inside that looks like a hairdryer heat element, and this little switch that selects between the three Chinese symbols, which I'm guessing are low, medium, and high. Uh, uh, this says video got off to a bad start. Well, this whole thing got off to a bad start because this end cap is loose. And I thought, well, I'll just give it a good push on. There was a loud splintering noise and all the plastic around here broke. Uh, so that's uh, that's me that did that. That wasn't in shipping. It was just trying to put this... Uh, it's just not been crimped on very well at all. Uh, the model number. There was some information. It says MT-3101. 100, 100 watts to 300 watts, 220 volts, 60 hertz. Although the frequency probably doesn't matter. Uh, now, the first thing I thought of when I saw this is that it's probably a bit like a hairdryer inside. And a hairdryer typically uses uh, a very simple voltage dropper. If that's the uh, heating element, let's draw it as a zigzaggy heating element. And it's got, say in the UK, it would be 240 volts at one end. And it would be the neutral at the other, so effectively zero volts referenced. What they do is that they tap off uh, at some point along the heating element and they get the voltage divided. It's almost like a potential divider. And they put that through a bridge rectifier and then they drive a little motor with it. So that's uh, what I'm expecting to find in here. And I'm guessing that the different uh, heat heating uh, sections will be just multiples of elements or a single element tapped in different ways. So let's uh, investigate this. Oh, let's plug it in. That, that's a good idea. Let's plug it in. I'm going to leave it unplugged initially while I screw it in here just in case this uh, cap comes off as it kind of is, just because it's looking a wee bit wobbly. Ugh. So I think this is designed for, what's the word for it, vivariums? To things like with... Oh. Things with... Uh, reptiles in them and other things that need to be kept hot, like uh, alligators and koala bears or whatever. So here's the three LEDs, and I'm going to try and avoid this blowing in the microphone. Uh, that's uh, setting one which is apparently 127 watts. Odd power factor! If I would have thought if this was a heat element that would have been unity power factor. Maybe I'm wrong about the circuitry. Uh, Put the switch over to there. It's gone up to 200 and f say 250 watts. And the switch on oh, the power factor has improved. Power factors get even better. It's closer to a unity load and uh, 367 watts. So 367 watts, 250, and the lowest is 100 and say 26. Okay, let's unplug it and open it. So I'll gingerly unscrew this so it doesn't all just fall apart. And I'll get rid of the other stuff out of the way. So, four screws here. Let's pop them out and see if that gives access. I'm hoping there's some sort of thermal cutout on it some sort of thermal protection. Ideally, if this was a UK type, sort of, well, if this was a compliant product from most parts of the world, it would have thermal protection to, so that if the fan stopped in any way, uh, it wouldn't just cut out, it would, it would have the uh, thermal fuse as well. Oh, blimey. There's a circuit board. There's the fan. So mains is coming in. The heat element is very reminiscent of the one you'd find in a hairdryer. It has three wires going to it. Uh, it's got a little thermal uh, cutout switch there. But that's a set of little... Oh no, it's got a thermal fuse as well. It has. It's got the bimetallic switch. If it gets blocked for temporary, you know, just... Uh, as a sort of first step protection that can reset, and then it's got this thermal fuse as well, which I'm guessing then, if this thermal fuse is going to this red wire, this red wire is, it's actually the, the feed coming in from the lamp holder. 
Right, that's quite a complex circuit. That is just f full of circuitry. What on earth is all this for? It looks like it's got one, two, three bridge rectifiers. Why? Right, one moment please, I'm just going to reverse engineer this. The deed has been done, it's been reverse engineered and it breaks down into three distinct modules. It's got the lamp driving circuitry, it's got the heating element switching circuitry and the uh, power supply for the fan which is based on a fairly hefty capacitive dropper. So I'm just going to nudge in here momentarily so we can take a close look at this. So let's start with the LED circuitry, that's uh, basically a concentrated this side of the circuit board with the three LEDs, the little dropper capacitor, smoothing capacitor and a resistor and the bridge rectifier. And here's how it's arranged. It's got a 220 nanofarad capacitor with a 330k discharge resistor across it. It's got the bridge rectifier made of discrete diodes. It's got a 10 microfarad 50 volt capacitor, an unusual value, 91 ohms, and then three LEDs in series. The fan is just that scaled up, and this is where I couldn't work out why there were three what I thought were bridge rectifiers. It turns out that this cluster of the diodes here that were also different to the conventional diodes are actually Zener diodes. And uh, it starts off with this massive 3.3 microfarad capacitor with a 330k discharge resistor, goes through a bridge rectifier, um, and then hits this wall of Zener diodes that are basically acting as a, a voltage shunt uh, if the voltage goes above 12 volts, these will start to conduct. And I tested the voltage rating of these diodes by turning the supply power supply voltage way down low, uh, putting it across these diodes, and then gently ramping it up and watching the current until it just started to creep up. And it did so just as it approached 12 volts. There are also two 51 ohm resistors that uh, these two resistors in parallel, um, just connected across the bottom of that, so that'll be roughly 26 ohms with the combined value. I'm guessing that's probably just to help dissipate some of the heat, because that would get quite hot, particularly if this went open circuit. Then there's a 470 microfarad 25 volt capacitor, and then the fan. The fan, which I hooked up to my bench power supply on 12 volts and drew about 240 milliamps, which seems quite a lot. I'm not sure if that will supply the full current. The heating section with the resistors and the switching is quite clever because of the way they've done this. Effectively, there's two switches in series with each of the heating elements. There's a 487 ohm element and a 244 ohm heating element. Then there's the two thermal switches going down to the other uh, supply cable. So I think I might get these symbols not quite correct. I think this might be the thermal switch here, this symbol. I was going to draw a thermal fuse initially as just a standard fuse with a T next to it um, and the thermal switch I've just drawn as a switch with a T next to it. This is what came to mind. Let's uh, take a look at the switches and how that works for selecting the temperature. The switch here has eight connections in the back and as you slide the uh, switch up and down it shunts pairs of those connections on both sides. It's also got a small circuit board on the back of it with uh, printed circuit board tracks linking some of the pins and it's quite neat. So in the low setting it shunts these two contact contacts at the bottom, these two pairs. And because of the way the circuit board is arranged, the current will flow from the supply coming in, down through a printed circuit board track to that contact, bridged across and it will go out to the low setting, but the medium setting will not have any electrical connection to it at all. When you set it to medium by sliding the switch to the middle position, it links these two contacts. And although it's linking onto this printed circuit board track, there's still no direct connection from the incoming mains out to the low. The only connection is uh, from the incoming mains down to this contact and then looping out through that contact and out through the medium uh, resistance for that medium heat setting. When you set it to high, the co two top contacts are shunted. And then because of the printed circuit board tracks, you've got current flowing through that contact, down through that track, and out through the uh, connection here to the low setting uh, element. And you've also got uh, a link from the mains through this contact directly to the medium. So both of them come on together, and that gives the combined resistance and heat that uh, results in roughly about 360 watts of power. So it's quite neat. It's quite... Uh, it's quite a simple arrangement. The one thing it did uh, 
mystify me as why they didn't use uh, the resistive dropper arrangement as hair dryers do. But maybe it was just cheaper and easier just to put it in the circuit board and have a capacitive dropper feeding the fan. But yeah, it's quite neat. It was quite fun to take to bits. Can't think of a use for it, but if you're heating a small space like a cupboard or the intended application, the sort of um, things like snakes where you just want a, a bit of heat, um, I'm not sure if the hot air is going to be as good as just the standard ones that just emit the sort of in radiant heat. I'm not really sure. But um, yeah, it's a simple, functional little heater. It's quite a smart little thing.